Well, hello, hello, all of our friends out there. Today, we're going to talk about how you can talk about your art with confidence because your message needs to make an impact on the world. I think this is an important topic for artists today. What do you think, Sergio? I totally agree, Beth. I could not agree more. I think this is a great topic. At all times, we need to be ready to speak about our art in an elevator, in a gallery, or somewhere with a friend, with a stranger. So I think it's going to be a great episode. Or on a stage. Or on a stage. <laughs> there you go. There's so many different ways that we can talk about our art. But one thing that I have learned from working with so many artists over the last 10 years is that we get gripped with fear and we and we don't express exactly what it is that we want to share. And the thing about art is that it's so meaningful and personal to us that mm -hmm. if we can express and articulate our message well, then it just makes us feel that much better about the impact that we want to make with the art that we're creating. So today we have some tips about how to do that and do that well. But first, Sergio, how are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. Thank you uh, for bringing this topic. I think it's a really good one. You know, this is something that I think you get better at over time and uh, you got to be proactive. I was, you know, for now, for all the video that I do and things, you know, I was once a shy child and, uh, you know, it was one of those things that I had to work at it, you know. Uh, it wasn't that easy to click that button or to st stand up in front of an audience and do a lecture or something. I had to get, get good at it and we continue getting good at it. So I'm looking forward to getting your tips uh, because I know you have been in, in a stage or multiple stages uh, quite recently and I cannot wait to hear what you have learned. Of course, I'm happy to share all the tips that I have that help me speak on stage about my art. I just wanted to share a little bit about how I transitioned from being an artist to a speaker, because one thing that I knew that was important was the message of my work. We learned that we've got to write it in our artist statements and in the copy for the programs and things like that. But it doesn't ever seem to get beyond the page or beyond the paragraph on the wall. And I think that we need to connect to that message more. And as artists, it's our responsibility to be able to articulate that with our words and our voice. And I learned this when I was at an Americans for the Arts conference back in, I think, 2013 or 14. Mm -hmm. And I saw all these artists on stage talking about their work. I thought, oh, this must be the next step. Like if you're creating work and you're doing projects and you're making an impact, then the next step is to be able to talk about it. And so that's when I started to really focus in on how do I share my message in a way that's going to reach audiences differently than just reading about it on a page or on a gallery wall or, or in passing or maybe in a magazine. Because the message of the work is so important. And yet sometimes it just doesn't hit exactly like it needs to for that impact to happen. Have you experienced that before, Sergio? Uh, like specifically like not having that, that impact? Yeah, or like feeling like that impact you want to make it has to oh. go beyond what we traditionally know to do as artists. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, even at the, at the beginning when uh, first had first opportunities to speak in public or uh, in front of, of a group of people, you know, uh, like thinking, of how can I make this more memorable? You know, how can mm -hmm. I make sure that what I'm talking and what I'm saying is resonating with the person on the other side? I, I hate when uh, you're speaking and, you know, you see people distracted or that means they're not engaging. That means that whatever you're saying, you know, it's just not coming through. Um, so I've always been interested in how can we do it better? You know, how can we make it um, sometimes more fun or more interesting? Uh, in a way to drive to what we want to say, you know, uh, using different ways and methods to do that. Yeah. And the more that you can connect your message with an audience, the more they're going to want to connect with your art, purchase your mm -hmm. art, support you as an artist. And so the best thing that we could be doing to create and build our careers is being able to talk about our work. So yeah. let's start with the first step. I broke it down into like three sections. Okay. Prepare practice and present. Very good. <laughs> okay. So, but we're going to dive into those just a little bit deeper. So when it comes to preparing to talk about your work, I think it's important that we ask ourselves this question. What is the most important thing I would like to share? Hmm. What's the most important thing you would like the audience to know? 
If you get stuck and you don't know what to write or you don't know what to say, just ask yourself that question because once you do, things are going to start coming up for you. And the mm -hmm. first thing or the second thing that comes up that, you know, those are the most important things. So just ask yourself, what's the most important thing you can say? And then build your whole presentation around that. Because once you identify the things that are important for you to say, then you can ask yourself, well, do I know a story that supports this? Mm -hmm. And maybe you tell a story about it. Maybe you tell multiple stories about it. But it's important to connect story to the message and to the art. So when you're telling a story about the most important thing that you want people to know about the work, how is it relating back to the art? Make sure that you're creating that bridge between what the visual work looks like, the story that you're telling, and the message that you want to make. So it's hard to do if you don't prepare ahead of time. So that's why the preparation phase is so important. We've got to know exactly what we want to say, the stories that we're going to share when we say it, and how it relates back to the art. Because then that's going to make the audience feel like, Oh, I get this because you mm -hmm. don't want them to be confused. And oftentimes people get confused when looking at art and trying to make all these connections. So you've got to be really clear about what you want to say. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really uh, important one because uh, it, it reminds me of even we, we practice that in the studio. You know, when you're making a work of art, you're like, what's the focal point, right? Where mm -hmm. do I want people not to miss in this particular composition? So the same way as you're talking about planning, what you want to say, asking that question, or what's the most important? So you can build the presentation around that, right? You don't want them to miss that thing that you want them to live with in their mind. Right. Everything else builds to put that at the, at, the, at the front, you know, same thing as we do it. And even like I was thinking, well, you know, we I like, for example, as a curator, I practice the same thing. You know, when I put a show together and think about which one is the piece that I want when people walk in, the one they see first. And that builds the show, mm -hmm. you know, from that point then i i start building the rest of it but um you know having that idea uh fine-tuned or you know very strategically uh position i think uh, yeah it was gonna make for a good presentation so that people when they leave if we did a good job i think they'll remember that one point <laughs> that's why we have to be so clear because if we're clear our audience will be clear too right mm-hmm and Absolutely. so that's why the next step practice is so important now when i say practice i mean role play like get into your speech do it a few times know what it feels like when you're delivering it in your body so mm -hmm. what i like to do is visualize how do i want this to go do i see myself on the stage or talking to another person like i just closed my eyes because i'm visual I'm like <laughs> visualize okay time to close your eyes Visualize yourself doing what it is that you're setting out to do. Go through the entire process and then get up and practice it. Do it. Actually live in that vision. And that will make you feel so much more confident before you get on stage. Because then you're not just doing it for the first time. Yeah. You've done it at home, maybe a few different ways. And you've tried it on someone like a friend or another artist. You're like, hey, check this out. Tell me what you think. Is this making sense? It's so important to get that feedback in your practice sessions because... There could be a word or two that you're missing that if you put that in, it just bridges everything together and it makes it the delivery flawless. Mm -hmm. No, I like that practice in particularly, you know, when you're doing, let's say, which is maybe typical for an artist uh, to do an artist talk, right? You have a show, you're invited to, of course, do the typical artist talk. So, so you want people to feel uh, that you are prepared, right? People come from different places, you know, maybe some people draw for an hour or, you know, to be there, to listen to what you have to say and just showing up unprepared, uh, you know, it's not cool, you know, for that person who took that time. And, you know, I, I feel like everyone who comes to see me or hear me in, in some way, uh, you know, I own them, you know, that time to be ready and to prepare. So when I stand up in front of them, uh, I have something of value to deliver, something of value to give. And and I think that's, a, you know, that that is the preparation, right? We have to... Uh, invest the time to prepare so that we make sense so that our sentences flow and our ideas flow and, and i think a lot of times you know we get we get kind of wrapped up into um kind of a a, a mousetrap and just going around in our thinking where when we don't have a, a flow of this is how i want to start my talk 
this is how it continues. This is kind of a, a something that's going to bring people back in if they are distracted and then continue. Something that I like, for example, to do when I'm not, when I'm invited to another stock, if I can, I like to say, I don't want to do another stock with people just sitting and me just giving a lecture. I would rather walk around the room and bring mm -hmm. people along, right? So they feel like they're part of it. I want to be a guide, not to be the central point. And by being a guide, then, you know, I can bring him along. And that's something I can practice at home. You know, I can just go in my living room and say, okay, you know, time myself a little bit. How much time do I want to spend on each wall so that, you know, we, uh, we you have a, a successful talk. There's nothing, there's nothing worse than artist talks that I've been and probably you've been too, that they go on and on and on and on because the artist did not plan anything in mind. It's just whatever is coming and it's, it just keeps coming. And it's just like, ever like, when is this thing going to be over? And I just keep going on and on in circles. And we don't want that. I think we want to be respectful of people, prepare ahead of time, be ready. And, uh, and I think everybody will have a great time and you have a great time too. You're so right about that. And I think sometimes people do go on and on because they haven't prepared and they are not right. clear about exactly what they want to say. So if you're clear about what you want to say and the more concise you are, the better, because then that makes it easier for the audience to understand. And mm -hmm. that's really what it's about. And yeah, the more you can get the audience involved in, in the talk that you're giving, that's even better. Right. Engaging with the audience and breaking through that barrier between you and them is the way we get connected. Mm -hmm. And when we're connected, then anything is possible when it comes to trying to understand each other's perspectives and ways of thinking and choices when it comes to the art making and the lessons that we learn. And so the more comfortable you can be on stage, the better. And that's why we prepare and we practice. And then we come to the last point, present. And when I say present, yeah. I mean the day of. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling those nerves, you need to have some breathing techniques in your back pocket to mm -hmm. calm you down, things that you can do that aren't obvious, that if you're in a group of people and you're feeling that anxiety coming up, like you're getting sick to your stomach, I know all of these feelings. Mm -hmm. It's important to be able to practice a breathing exercise. And one thing, one way that I do it is I breathe in like I'm sucking through a straw for about mm -hmm. eight seconds. And then when I breathe out, I put my tongue on my teeth. Hmm. And you can do this really nonchalantly, mm -hmm. really slowly, quietly. And you will feel within just three rounds of that, a, a very big decrease in your anxious mm -hmm. feelings. Mm -hmm. So yeah, practice that and you will know what I'm talking about. And then <laughs> besides breathing, like when you're on stage, you need to practice a powerful posture because if we are going to speak confidently, then we're going to stand up straight. Our shoulders are going to be back. We're going to be projecting from our chest. We're going to be confident in front of that audience, not just because we feel confident because we are posturing ourselves to be confident. And it's a practice. Mm -hmm. And so when you're at home doing your practice for the presentation, always remember that there is a, a way to posture yourself to energetically prepare your body mm -hmm. to deliver an impactful message because the audience will feel that. So yeah. Sergio, are there times that you have felt nervous or, you know, you, maybe you just, crouch your shoulders a little bit because you're nervous or like how have you worked through some of those anxious body movements when you're giving a talk <laughs> yeah that's a good one yeah no i think i think it's normal to feel nervous because you care about your delivery right you 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 care that it's going to be good and that you have prepared enough um and uh, i think that those like feelings i like to do breathing you know, and I like to stretch, you know, I like to stretch, move my, move my mouth a lot, particularly mm -hmm. if I haven't talked to anybody in the morning and I'm going to do, a, you know, speaking, um, things that I do quite a bit, like I go and I speak to colleges or universities. So, you know, um, a lot of times it's like first thing in the morning and I haven't really talked to anybody. So I, I find that, you know, articulating my mouth over emphasizing movement helps me. So when I go on the stage, I, I feel like, I have already been talking. <laughs> it's not the first words I want to say in the morning. So that helps me out uh, to relieve the stress. 
I find that also uh, moving on stage, I love talking through my hands. And I think that's, you know, for a lot of artists, like, especially what do I do with my hands? Probably they ask you too, right? What do I do with my hands? You know, and you don't want to be like a stiff stick in, in the front of the stage, but your hands are, have a big part on, on you articulating your words, your message, the feeling that you have. So, and that also helps you so that you're not, you know, crunched like this because you're, you are in motion, you know, you, you, you feel free. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I use uh, my hands a lot, even for my breakfast with Sergio episodes. You know, I'm always, sometimes I see him back like, oh, shit, you know, look like I'm doing this. And <laughs> <laughs> I like to speak through my hands. And that, I think, helps me also to feel more relaxed. Mm -hmm. And um, so those are little techniques that, to me, help me to be more relaxed when I'm in front of an audience. Um, because I feel that, you know, my whole me is speaking, not just my mouth. Oh, yeah. I got to bring your whole self to it. And if you are feeling tense or nervous, like Sergio said, do some stretches, get into your body, get loose, shake it out. Like energy is stored in our bodies. And so if we're feeling like this, the best thing we can do is just shake it out, shake it out, get it off. And that will really loosen you up, make you feel more open. You're able to receive the energy from the audience. They're able to receive yeah. it from you. Like it's just a beautiful exchange when we allow ourselves to be open, authentic, and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And if you can do those things, then you'll definitely make an impact with the message of your work. Mm -hmm. how, now, for you, but I have a question for you because you have been doing this quite a bit lately on stage and uh, not just a a quick short thing, but mm -hmm. a whole program where people come see you for the for the entirety of, of the program. How do you read people's uh, engagement or reaction to as you start like the first few minutes uh, of your presentation? Are there certain things that you do to to kind of read the audience? I'm just curious. Well, I talk to them. Okay. So if you're talking to someone, you can sort of get a feel from where they're at asking questions, say, raise your hand. Does this resonate with you? Mm. You know, just trying to get them agreeing. Yes. Raising Even their just hand. the shake of the head, right? Yes. If That's you see art. them shake, sh you know, nodding their head, they are tracking. If they're mm. raising their hand when you're saying, did you experience this? Raise your hand. Or you, you can direct them with your words like, mm -hmm. Hey, raise your hand. If dot, dot, dot. Uh, oh yeah. Right, that's that's me. Mm-hmm. That's and then one. I also, I do a lot of like different exercises with the group. I mean, we go through a whole embodiment exercises, breathing exercises, finding our voice. I mean, mm. we do a lot of things together throughout the keynote. I mean, this is a 45 minute speech. So right. it's important that I've got them moving, resetting throughout. Like they're not just sitting there still for 45 minutes they're wiggling they're doing all kinds of stuff they're <laughs> laughing and you know i'm just i build that into the talk though like yeah, i okay. know that every so often i need to check in with them make sure that yeah. they know like i'm with you you're with me okay let's keep going Mm -hmm. it's like anytime you're guiding someone you're not just gonna walk off and be like well i yeah. guess i guess they're coming <laughs> <laughs> You make and, sure that they stay with you. And that's, it's hard to do, but grounding yourself is a great way of doing that, calming your nerves and getting the practice. Like, it's just like anything. If you are going to go speak about your work and you are not great at it, well, you probably weren't great at painting when you started either. So it's a <laughs> right. skill that can be learned. And it's, if you're bad at it the first time, it's fine. Just do it again. You're going to get better. You're going to get, yeah. there's, there's only, only upwards from mm -hmm. starting <laughs> when you're not feeling so great about it. Always room for improvement. And maybe that also the idea of uh, what if I make a mistake, right? If I, I, I have done mistakes in my talks and sometimes, you know, I, I say something and I know it wasn't correct for some reason, but, you know, I think accepting that mistake on the spot, you know, uh, depends how you, depends what you're talking about, of course, but, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, uh, so I have done sometimes like, oh, I make a joke of it, oh, you know, and then go back and correct it mm -hmm. if I, you know, if I notice and then just keep going, you know, just keep, like, how do you deal with like mistakes if you find that, you know, you said something wrong or, you know, how do you deal with it? Well, first off, I just know like we're going to get past this. So yeah. no big deal, but own it, right? Like you yeah. said, correct yourself, keep moving on, make a joke of it 
whatever. Like when you make a mistake, it humanizes you because we all make mistakes. And when you mm -hmm. humanize yourself on stage, that's when people start to connect with you. So it's never a bad thing if you make a mistake. If you make a mistake, then people are just going to probably lean in more because they're paying attention more. Right, right. Because something happened that was like, what? And then it's like, oh. Uh -huh. And it's a way just to connect with people. I mean, I've totally gone blank on stage before. Not really. <laughs> yeah, many times. And then I'm just like, uh, I know I'm going to get through this. Or yeah. I'm like, you know what? I need you guys to give me a round of applause, like <laughs> cheer me <laughs> on <laughs> or something like that. You could just be playful with it. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all people. People respond to playfulness in a positive way. Yeah, and, and they will they will forgive you know any mistakes that we make on that sense. Yeah. I mean, we can't expect people to be perfect. Yeah. Because we're not perfect. No one is. And so when right. we get on stage, we're gonna do our best. That's why we prepare and we practice. And it comes to the presentation, we're gonna just give it our best shot. And the more we prepare and practice, the better it's gonna be, and it's gonna keep getting better over time. Mm -hmm. So it's just another skill to learn. And it's a good one too, because the message of my art became more important to me than the art itself. <laughs> and that's why I have dedicated my career to speaking about the work that I've created and why, because the message is so powerful. <laughs> and one thing I've learned is that artists can go back and talk about projects they did five, 10 years ago. Who cares? Right. Just because yeah. you do a project and it's over, it doesn't mean that you can't talk about it anymore. You need to do a new project to make it relevant. Mm -hmm. if this is what artists do. They make work, they talk about their work, and they can con continue talking about it for years to come. Right. If you're thinking you need to do something different or do something bigger, you probably have a story and a message already that you've done that you could start delivering tomorrow. Exactly. It's just waiting there to be unpack <laughs> and share with the world. Yes. That's, that's good. Now, those were really good points, uh, Beth. That was pretty awesome. Thank you for uh, helping us with that because I know that's something that is really close to your heart and also uh, very much uh, recent, you know, for you as well, something that you're doing right now. Oh, yeah. And I still make art, though, like, because I love it. Yeah, <laughs> but performing is really fun. And I just love all creative disciplines. And so just lean into what feels good. Mm hmm and that's the best advice I could give because sometimes being an artist can be tough. Right. And we don't know exactly what direction to go in. But if you feel like you need to speak about your art, do it. Do and it. use this, use these tips to help you get there. Sweet. Those are, those are really good tips. Love them. Well, Sergio, I just had such a great time with you today talking and thank you no, all for watching. If you would love to connect with us further, Sergio, tell tell everyone watching how they can find you online. Yes, of course, you can find me right there at Sergio Gomez Art anywhere on the social media platforms and on my website, SergioGomezOnline.com. How about you, Beth? You can find me at Beth English on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all the places, and my website's BethEnglish.com. And if you found some of these tips helpful today, please reach out, send me a DM, send me a message. I would love to connect with you. If you have questions about speaking about your art, how to get started, I'd love to help out. So mm -hmm. thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye, guys. Bye, Beth. Bye.